So I wanted to give you a list of what I'm going to be working with today. It will be listed down the bottom. I'm using Wendy Vecchi's Doodle Stamp and Christmas Stamp today. And they are a must-have. I'm using Wendy Vecchi's Perfect Cardstock. Wendy Vecchi Make It Perfect Cod Adhesive. That's how I glued that on. And that's with her chippies, and it's called Statements. Now I also am using Simon Hurley's, which I gotta tell you, outstanding. This is great for Christmas. This is gonna, this is a classic. So you're gonna need his folk art stamp, his dye ink collection. I'm using fake plant, shooting star, bee sting, and maybe even some traffic cone. Ranger archival jet black pad, a letterate metallic silver pen. Letterate black and a letterate cardstock. The uh, papers you can get from Ranger. Let's uh, get going and I can show you how to do all these beautiful things. Today we're going to do some magic, and I'm not kidding. We're going to have this beautiful crystal ornaments, and I'm going to teach you how to do them, and they're not that difficult. A little bit of work, but you can do it. So I'm going to use the snow cap now. Shake it well, and I'll put it in my little palette. And I don't care if it dries because we like the different consistencies. Now I'm going to take the ornament and put it on my acrylic block. I'll put it this way. And I'm going to go into my snow cap. In snow cap, you have to use alcohol. So I have a little jar of alcohol just to thin it out a little bit. I don't want it too heavy. And then I'm just gonna lightly go over the ornament. And I'll do it a few times. I'm thinking I want the light source come one direction, so I'll get one side a little lighter than the other. Now this will all clean up with a little alcohol, so don't worry about anything. And I'm just tapping. I like little holes. Uh, you'll see why as we work on this, but I like little bit of holes. Uh, so it isn't an impression that it's just stamped. We want it to look like real crystal. So I got that and I'm going to just turn this so make it easier on myself and I'm just going to kind of put it over here. And I don't want to press too hard. I want it, see how that's broken up? I want that. Let's give this a spritz of alcohol. I'm just going to move that. And then I'm just going to put another one over here. And that's all I want. I don't want it real strong because we're gonna do some, some work. So what I'm gonna do is take my brush, the smallest one, and go into the white. And I, what I wanna do is just, and I don't care about your brush being perfect or any of that, you can wipe it like this to get it to a nice chisel edge and you can just kind of tap on the areas you see very light. But leave the dark areas dark already it's starting to look like crystal. You can always pinch out your brush again, get it a chisely edge like that, and just dance it around. So I want this side maybe to be a little lighter, so I'm just gonna kinda go around the design a little bit more with some light where I think it is. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because Crystal just catches the light. Now I know that the top needs to be lit so it tells people where to where the um, light source is. I don't have to do the whole loop. I can just do a piece of it. I can do just a little bit more of the, the crystal shape. And just to give you an idea, here's the, the shape. You can use this as a reference, but I don't care about it being perfect. It's just got to get the idea of, of edges. So we get little little sharp edges in here and there's a nice edge here now the lights over here coming in this will be a little lighter and already it looks like crystal right I mean that's pretty amazing don't you think and I'm just gonna highlight that now as it dries it's gonna sink into the paper a little bit so get yourself a nice edge again just to get the sides just tap on it. I might like this a little bit lighter. Do you see how that pops? And maybe a couple of these a little lighter. Little lines that are in there. 
And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's crystal. Crystal tends to catch light in just little spots. If you dry out, just get some more alcohol. Just reshape in your brush. And, and you want the variated lights. In other words, when you put this down, it'll uh, sink into the paper a little bit. And that's okay because it makes another value for you. And that works great because the, there's a lot of gray in crystal. And I'm just putting dots down. And already it's pretty amazing. Getting another nice edge and reinforcing my light right there because I want it to hit this way. So it's going to hit right there, right there, and right there. Anywhere you think it, the light would catch. And I will show you how to manipulate it. So don't worry. Oh, you, you goofed up or something, you're not happy, it doesn't matter because you're gonna fix it. Painting is all about um, adjustments. So now I'm gonna just put a little bit more light here and I do many layers. So in other words, you put it down but you might have to come back again because it sinks into the paper. But look at how crystally that looks. It's stunning. Now it's gonna go under. So when it goes under, it's a little shaded compared to where it would be hitting the light really strong. Get a little more alcohol. See how you can reactivate your ink? It's, it's really magical. And so I'm putting that down. It's gonna be lighter here and here, maybe even a little bit of, even though there's no lines there, I'm putting a little shine, a little haze from the light being reflected off the glass. So I'm just gonna tap that in there and it doesn't matter because it's gonna sink in and it won't be as bright as you think as it dries. And I put a little on this side. Now do you see a light source coming? But it's gonna be lighter on this side, so I'll give it another hit. Look at that. Oh my God, is that beautiful or what? So I'm gonna be showing you quite a few little techniques today. So we're just gonna move along. I'm getting a little thicker low snow cap and just kind of putting a little light in between the gray areas. Do you see how it catches the light and it becomes a sparkle? Look at that, that's amazing. A little more light there. Now the light's coming through, so it'll be a little haze here, but I got a lot of white on my brush so I want to tap off and then just softly haze that area. You can wipe off your brush too so you're not too loaded. Oop. And if you are loaded, just lift it like right, rub it, doesn't matter, it's not perfect like I said. But you don't want to lose all the black. If it isn't for the black, you wouldn't get the, the crystal look. So you don't want to lose your black. So let's say you did lose your black because that's, it's all about adjustment. I just use my black letter it pen and I can carve out some of the dark area. And I like the letter it pen because it's super duper fine. So I can get right in there and make edges like that. And if you make those edges, that's what's gonna also help with the feeling of crystal. And then I can just Remember that the light's coming this way, so the darker side will be on the right of the light areas. So you don't even have to say what it is, just make it dark, little dots. Look at that, little dot, little shine there, little something, little something, something, break it up. If it's all gray, just break it up, scribble. Look at how that just keeps adding and adding to the crystal look. So we're gonna be doing that as well with some little tags, which I think are adorable. And you know, people can use these as um, on their trees as well. Now see how this is consistently consistent. Too much for me. I like it to be broken up. So the right side will be darker. So I'm just gonna go right in the middle with that letter at pen. You, you see that? Look at how it made that raised area. I can go again. Don't be afraid to go and do your layers. And you can also break that up. It doesn't need to be completely a line. So you know how I am. I like things broken up. So I'm just gonna kind of break up some of these lines a little more. So you don't have to worry about, oh my God, I, got, I didn't get enough black. Because you can always come back in 
and add a little bit more and adjust because that's what we do. We adjust. Look at that. Is that like phenomenal? Your friends are going to like be so excited when they get such a beautiful tag or card that you send them. So this is amazing and it really doesn't need more than that. That's fine. I'm just kind of like just breaking things up. That's the big trick. If you notice anything's consistent, break it up a little bit like right in here. Just make it a little broken up. I like that. I want to break up this line. I don't want to see all the way through. Crystal doesn't always isn't always see-through everywhere. It's you'll see the background, but you won't see the crystal. So anyway, that looks beautiful. So you can imagine now doing another one. So let's get Simon's little greenery here. So these will clean off with a little alcohol, so no worries. And make sure you've got the right side facing you. And now again, I'm just gonna use my white and I'm gonna use alcohol and just go over this here and there. Again, I like it more artistic looking rather than an illustration but that's just me, you do what you love to do. I'm just showing you the technique. So I'm just tapping it on. I might need a little more snow cap, so shake it up, get it on your brush and just lightly go over some of that stencil. And, whoop, well, that doesn't matter. Goes to show, doesn't matter. We're gonna have it hanging from this, so we're just gonna go over that other one and I get little hints of, of the branch. So I'm just gonna spritz it a little bit more with alcohol and give it a little, another little hit there. That looks good. So you can keep goofing around with this all you want. And this, I, wanna, I might like this a little bit more pronounced down by the tip because I'm gonna hang it off the branch. So I just add a little bit more. Doesn't matter. It's it's a branch on a Christmas tree. They're all over the place. Look at that. That's beautiful. You can do more if you want. And there you go. I'm going to take a little Simon Hurley's fake paint. And it's a green color. And I really like these colors that he came out with. They're water soluble. So I'm going to use a different brush and go into water and clean up. Now this is the trick, you gotta remember which one's water, which one's alcohol, but I just wanted to do this. And I also wanna make sure it's got a lot of water in it because these colors are super intense and I start in the darkest area and I'm just tapping on top of the alcohol ink. And because it's alcohol, it's not gonna dissolve. But I'll get that beautiful color. And again, I'm starting in the dark area and working down because this way less and less comes off my brush. And just put a little bit more there. And you can manipulate the, the depth of your branch. So it's underneath the tree here, but it's coming out towards us. So we just give it a little more hit, but leave these light. So go into a little bit more water and just give my flavor of the green, but we don't want too much. There, that looks very nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna wipe up my mess with a dirty towel. These things last forever. I use dinner napkins because they last forever. And uh, save a tree. Okay, so now that looks really, really pretty. And I can use one of these Letterit uh, macas. This is a metallic maca. And I'm just gonna make a little bit of a hook going through And you can even touch little areas with the maca just to give it a little more of a sparkle as it moves. But up here, it's going to be a little bit darker because of the shadowing and the light coming this way. And that, voila, that looks pretty nice. And I call this one done. So anyway, isn't that beautiful? I think it's stunning. You could uh, really embellish it like I did here. And I did use uh, Simon's uh, New Colors over the Snowcap Alcohol Ink. And it really worked really nice. I also tried putting on glossy accents and it gave a little bit of more sparkle. So that's up to you. I think it works fine without, but it, it's another dimension if you're inclined. Okay, let's put this aside. 
So this time we're gonna use Wendy Vecchi's Perfect Cod Stock and we're gonna make a perfect cod. And I'm gonna do a beautiful Christmas cod on here and I wanna do crystal again, but I wanna do it on white. So there's a little different technique. So I'm gonna get Wendy's stamps. I'm gonna take out the Christmas balls and I'm gonna take out her greenery. So I'm gonna do a wreath first. And I'm going to use just the black. So I just pouncing the black on there with my archival ink. And I'm just going to place it kind of high because I want to have the ornaments hanging off of the wreath. And that works perfect for me because I don't like too much. I like to add more of my own deal. So I'm going to take her sprig. I like to line it up so it makes it a little easier. And again, I'm going to just use the pad with the archival ink black. Maybe right there. And then I want to do it again right there. So I get more dimension. And I might just bring that all the way around. how beautiful that looks already. What a sweet card. And I like to fill, so just use the corner. And then just fill it here and there. Very versatile stamps that she has. I love them. And then let's take our crystal. Put that on the block again. This time I'm using black. And I don't want a too, too strong so I'm going to put these maybe higher and then these a little lower I like it okay so that's all we need because we're going to tweak everything up so now I'm going to take my letterit pen and if I want I can you know add a few more little diddlies but what's important is these little strands and I'm just doing one side and then I'll just do this one real lightly I'm just very lightly hardly touching the paper because we're going to use colors on that so I'm going to just this is going to be darker up in here so I'm just tapping little dots little dots here Bring a line down, maybe right in here and right there. And just putting little lines in here and there. But space them out, put dots on. And remember, the light's coming this way, so this is going to be grayer and grayer in here, so this will be a little lighter. So we just need to just put that like that. And I'm just gonna darken in here a little bit and up in here. And you see how it already starting to get that crystally look. Again, we'll just break it up and put the shadow there. This is gonna have a shadow more there because the line's going around. And this will be actually be a little shadowed there. Little dots, little knob at the top for where we hang the ornament and again we're going to shadow here a little bit more and on the right side but not the whole thing not right away anyway we can sometimes but when you break it up it starts to get that crystal look and it looks really nice so we just gotta darken up in here and then you do the same with all of them. I'll fast forward through this part.
Okay, so now I'm ready to embellish a little bit more. And I'm gonna use letter it pens. And I'm just putting those on there. Just put some of that beautiful color on there, just kind of just giving it an idea. I'm not going crazy. And just putting on some of this orange ribbon feeling with my orange letterit pen. And just wiggle. So now I'd like little bits of orange at the top on this. Follow some of the lines because it's like as if it's being reflected on the glass up at the top and you can just kind of add a little bit here and there. It doesn't even matter where, it's just a reflection. So you can just add little color. People love color, you know, it's Christmas time. Okay, I'm gonna use a little Simon Hurley's fake plant color. And I'm just gonna thin it out with water so it's not too, too bright, because it's a very bright green. But I like to move it slowly. So what I'm gonna do is start in the darkest area and follow some of these, and I'm just tapping on them. So this is a water soluble dye and it's very vibrant and beautiful. I can't say enough how much I love this cola. His, his dyes are beautiful. I'm not kidding, they're stunning. Well, I'm just following Wendy's little designs, but of course I never stay in the lines. Less and less is on my brush, so now I get a lighter application. So I'm just gonna go on top over here and just dance it, just dance. Now there's very little on my brush and I'm gonna bring some of that green down into these crystals because they're gonna catch the light of the, of the wreath. So now I want this dark area in here. So I'll go a little bit heavier and I want this area light. So I'm just gonna kind of bring that dark and as it dries, it lightens up a little bit, but not a lot. So be real careful on your dark area. That's why I go a little at a time. The inside will be darker than the outside of the wreath. You want a minute? <laughs> anyway, just dance. And look how easy this is. So it's not just a stencil and everything. It's a real unique piece. So I want darker at the top. A little dark on the right, and the crystal starts to pop. I'm loving it. And less and less on my brush, so I know I can control the lights coming this way. It will come through, but there'll be a little shadow right in here. And it has that beautiful crystal look. Now, if you not, if you want more light area, I can use my silver letterit marker. And I like to kind of break up the black line. And just makes it a little bit more interesting. See how you're just breaking it, it makes it look better. Because it's inconsistent and that looks always more attractive to people's eyes. You can also add a little bit more into the some of the balls. And a little bit here. Reinforce your darkest areas, which would be the top. And the light comes this way, so it would be this here a little bit. So the light comes through, so it would be a little darker there. And look how beautiful that looks. Now, I love Dimension, and it's called Statements. And I think this really will make a nice statement to this card. So we have all these beautiful words. You could write love, but I like joy. So I'm gonna put in joy. So what I'd like to do is just use some of the green and thin it down and just kind of towards the edge, just antique it a little bit with green. Kind of almost looks like as if it's textured from the the wreath itself from the pine needles. And 
And I'm just going to turn that just to hit the edge. Because you want it to join the wreath. You don't want it to stand out as big white word. And I'll use a little of the water that's on the palette here, which is my craft sheet. And I'm not kidding. If you don't have one, you need to get one. These are amazing. You can use them for so many things and nothing makes a mess. And I'm big on that. So don't be afraid to do uh, a few more layers. And that's all an advanced piece is, is just a little bit of more layers. Going as many times as I wish. But I want it to look like little pine needles coming off. You see how it's getting that feeling? And so I'm gonna darken the corners on this and on here as well, just to really reinforce those edges, surfaces. Look, it almost looks like holly. I like it, I'm leaving it. If you like it and you say, oh, that looks nice, that means leave it alone. You can always come back and change it, but if you leave it alone, you might find you were done and it was amazing. So that's, that's a real important tip. Look how beautiful that looks, oh my God. Looks like holly, I like that. Let's put some over here. And those are what I call painting with the universe because I wasn't planning on that, but it just happened. So just pay attention to what the painting's giving you. A lot of the time you're getting a lot of free, beautiful things. So let's put this over here and see how it looks. And oh my God, look how beautiful that is. That is a, a stunning Christmas cut. You know what, one more thing, I can't stand it. You know me, I'm always doing something else. Let's put out a little shooting star. And get some water. <laughs> And then just tap the yellow in there, just to pop this out a little bit more. There, that's nice. I love dimension, don't you? You can even take some of that yellow because now we have yellow up here. We need to also join it to our crystal. So let's do the middle area because that's coming out into our space. And voila, even more beautiful. You know, the other thing I would do, I'll tell you the truth on this one, so I'm just going to take a little of that green on the blending tool and just antique the edge. Like I say, play with the layers. And it's water soluble, so you can just add water if it starts to dry. And these colors are so vibrant and lovely. Just. can soften it a little bit and just give it a little soft curl around the edge if you want and it just kind of fills in the white so it isn't quite so harsh I'm thinking that is a lovely card and then joy I love it so I would attach that with the make it perfect card adhesive And this will be all done and ready to go in the mail. And I think I'd like it a little higher than lower. Position it and voila. What I like to do is make sure I'm the, use your fingers. You can tell if you're scented on the area. So sometimes I like to plan things out a little differently. I'll put them right on a little tag like this. These are all Wendy's stamps, but I gotta remember to keep the uh, texture side down so I know what I'm gonna get when I'm done. So I can actually lay this whole thing out all at once. I want my walls perfectly straight and I'll just line it up the lines with the block like that. So now I'm all set. Just push them down. I'm gonna take some snow cap, alcohol on my brush just to get it loose. And I just wanna lightly cover the top. And like I say before, this will all come off with alcohol. So don't worry about it. 
Oh, look how white that is. That's beautiful. I love snow cap. It really works great. And now I'll take it and turn it the way I want. Line it up and press. And I'll even pick it up and press it on my with my hand fingers on the other side because I really want a good coverage on this one. Ooh, so beautiful. Came out perfect. Ta-da! So now what I want to do is just enhance the uh, crystal. So I'm just going to take, I'll have those, since the snowflakes are giving off a little light, I'll make this the light source. A little bit over here. A little bit over here. I, this is my little ribbon. And I'll just tweak that a little bit more with some of the snow cap. And remember, you want the opposite side to be lit because the light comes through. And it has a very crystal effect. Okay, so now I want to wipe out my brush, grab a smaller brush. Now, if you can, use your best brushes for this because this is so small, you really need a nice point or a nice wedge. So you want a nice point and just tap little light spots on here and there where the light source is. But you want all those gray areas. Don't cover it all up. Just add a dot or two right there along the edges. Do you see how it already crystallized? Works magnificent. And you can really keep going with this as much as you wish. It's just a matter of layering. Look at that. Is that a beautiful? What a card. What a tag. <laughs> and that looks really nice. And you don't have to do any more than that. If you want, I can, you know me, I'm always doing something. I'm just going to spatter. A little of that snow cap. Uh, people don't really use alcohol ink. Uh, snow cap for a lot of things, but I find that works really good. Look how beautiful that is. All right, so I call that one done. So let me just go over some of the things we've done today. Love these stamps. So we just did this cute little tag. I did go back. <clears throat> I gotta admit, I did go back. I had to put in that little bird that she had in her stamps. Wendy has these stunning little sweetness of a bird in there, and I put her joy on there from her statement collection and i love it because of the dimension look how great that is i think that's adorable and we could always go over with more color you could go over this with more color using the uh water soluble inks uh by uh, simon hurley we added a little on here but i could go back and do it again so just to give you an idea and this one, I, I went very heavy with Simon's dye inks. They're beautiful, and they'll be all listed. But just wanted to show you how rich you can get these. What if we worked on a beige tag, tan tag, a yellow tag? You can do the same thing. You don't even need the black. So it's up to you. Here's one with black. Here's one without the black. And as you can see, it's a very nice effect. I antique the edge, and then I actually came back with the blending tool and added even a little bit of the um, snow cap to the background to give it that feeling of snowy, cool feel. Kind of another idea. Here's one with just stamped and do nothing. I mean, I would probably, I gotta say, I would take my brush and spatter. So let's say you, you got a bunch of these to make, but you don't wanna really go over the top. Just do some spattering. Anyway, you get the idea. That's a big one. <laughs> I'll make that into a snowflake. Anyway, and this one here, I did the edges. I antiqued it with the white. So I give it a real frosty look, but I put the Mary in with the, the archival ink jet black pad. So I did that so it just stands out. And I thought that came out really cute. And uh, here's a little phantom one I had left over. You know me, I can't stop. So I just put that on there. But you know, that's kind of cute. You don't have to do any more. You can just put your name in Antique and Edge and just, that would be sweet as well. So it's like, even if you have like a uh, 80 of these to do, just 
do them a little simpler and it, it'll get you by. And here, I just wanted to show you some others I was playing with. And uh, I got heavy handed with uh, the Simon Hurley dye ink. I really love it. Look how bright and happy it is. I did this with Wendy's beautiful stamps and then I outlined them and then I kind of used the stamps as an idea of flow. This is from Wendy's collection as well. Here's one I did, but I didn't do the other one yet. Just so you can see, you can start with hardly anything and then just add black to it. But just make sure it's not everywhere. You just want it here and there where you think the shop edges would pop out. And I outlined just the Christmas things. I haven't finished that one. And here's one with just a little hint of color on this. And I just kind of used um, Simon's dyes in the background, very loose and, and luscious. And I mean, I might even go back with some of the white on here and just kind of soften in here because this is the center of interest. I might add a little more green up in here, but that's it. But I just wanted to give you some more ideas on what you can do. So I hope you enjoyed the class. You really need to get these for your Christmas collection. Look at the, look at how you can use them. I mean, it's amazing. So happy painting, everybody. Happy Christmas and happy new year. Till next year. Bye.